Well, it's been a turbulent week in Westminster with reports of sleaze running rife, including harassment of female MPs, as well as a story of an MP watching pornography. It comes after an article was published in the Mail on Sunday, which some Tory MPs accused Labour deputy leader Angela Rayner of purposely distracting Boris Johnson by showing her legs. It led to the widespread condemnation from both sides, with many claiming overt sexism and misogyny was at play. Rayner herself described the article as sexist and steeped in classism. It comes in the wake of reports suggesting 56 MPs, including three cabinet ministers, are facing claims of sexual misconduct. Joining us now to discuss the developments is founder of the campaign group Can't Buy My Silence, and that's Zelda Perkins. Good to have us with you here today. Now, some of the ministers in the House have talked about this as being uh, men in positions of power, talking about it being the abuse of men in power. How have you been uh, viewing uh, this, Zelda, particularly as you were the lady who came out and said, uh, you can't buy my silence, Harvey Weinstein? (laughs) Um... I think the most disturbing thing about this is we're talking about 56 MPs. That's 10% of the House. Now, if you look at any other business or corporation, um, I'm not sure how they would be behaving if 10% of their workforce was being investigated for sexual misconduct. Um, I think this also shows the environment, unfortunately, that is the house at the moment that is Westminster Um, but if you imagine any other public company with 10% of their workforce being investigated uh, I think there would be a much larger outcry Um, and this is also it's a cross-party issue this isn't just um, this isn't just the Conservatives it's Labour too I think there are two Labour front benches three members of the cabinet Um, and it's it's really not it's it's really not acceptable one of the things, Zelda, that you campaign about is uh, is non-disclosure agreements and the fact that sometimes the poor behaviour, unacceptable behaviour of people is, is covered up and hidden by the signing of non-disclosure agreements. Can you t- tell us about, you know, perhaps uh, your experience with, with, with Harvey Weinstein and, and basically how he was able to get away with so much for so long because of non-disclosure agreements largely? Yeah, I mean, I think another thing is, is if we're seeing 56 MPs, um, 10% of the House being investigated, imagine how many people are being silenced or gagged um, within Westminster or are too afraid to come forward. So this really can only be the tip of the iceberg. Um, I was silenced for 20 years. Um, having signed a non-disclosure agreement with Harvey Weinstein. And I think one of the most horrific things that people don't understand about non-disclosure agreements is that the real harm starts once you've signed that agreement because you can then no longer own your trauma. You can't speak to the people that you need to speak about to get support from. Um, And, you know, apparently this has changed, but nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all at the moment. No legislation has changed. No regulation has changed. So it is perfectly acceptable for anybody in a position of power to pay somebody, use their bargain with them for their silence to protect their own reputation and hide abuse. Now, for the system to do that, that is much more disturbing than the individual poor behaviour of an of a employer or employee. You know, if the system is actually protecting the people that are abusing, then we're in really big trouble. And as far as I can see, nothing has advanced since I broke my non-disclosure agreement in 2017. The government, Theresa May's government, had a public consultation, but none of those recommendations has been taken up. The SRA, the Solicitor's Regulatory Authority, have not changed their rulings. So at the moment, Anybody in a position of power is still free to wield that tool of using an NDA in an unethical manner and quiet keeping silent somebody who is a victim of some form of discrimination, abuse or harassment. And Zelda, you were very, very brave in terms of breaking that non-disclosure agreement and pursuing the solicitor who uh, organised the non-disclosure agreement for for Harvey Weinstein. And, And we should all 
pay tribute to you for that because lots of people wouldn't have done that and you, you did shine a light on what was going on. I just wondered, do, you know, do you think Parliament's any different from any other workplace? I mean, the difference in Parliament is that obviously we get to find out all of these things. Mm. Um, you know, it all gets reported to a committee, it all gets published. Is it that different to any other workplace, do you think? Um, and Are these things happening in every workplace and we just don't know about them? Um, these things are happening in every workplace and I think the difference with Parliament and forgive me because I haven't spent very much time in there and um, um, when I have spent time in there it seems like a, a pretty impressive place but Parliament, Westminster should be held to a higher standard than any other business in the country and that's, that's non-negotiable. Our MPs, you, you are our employees essentially, you are there to help us, to represent us, to make our country a better place, to work towards that. And we put our trust in you to do that. And that does mean that you have to hold yourselves to a higher standard of behaviour. Um, and if you don't have the ability to do that, you don't have a place, you shouldn't have a place in Westminster. And, you know, you were talking earlier about the uh, MP who was caught looking at porn on his phone, who's saying that he opened that by mistake. Well, frankly, that's not an excuse. I don't, I actually don't think you should have phones in on the floor in, in the house. Um, you're there to debate and to be dealing with businesses of state, you know, business of state. Um, and if he opened his phone and the last thing that he happened to be looking at was porn, then he was clearly doing that in his office beforehand. So, you know, <laughs> in any other situation, he would be held to account. And I believe that people in Westminster should be held to a higher level. I think you're sharing the views there of uh, most of our viewers and most of the public. We are in a place of leadership and, of course, that's exactly what we should be doing. And that's why they're now going to look at the code of conduct and what uh, now uh, really how that those those codes should be viewed in this day and age. Zelda, I want to thank you very much indeed for coming in today, uh, for sharing your experiences and for having your say on what's been happening in the House of Commons. And I, I should just say for completeness that uh, it's been well reported that 56 MPs have been reported for sexual misconduct. <clears throat> I'm not sure where that figure's come from, but I should say that yesterday the uh, Joe Willows, the director of the Independent Complaints and Grievance Scheme, uh, which looks into these allegations in, in Parliament, sent out an email to every MP saying, uh, and it said this, over the last couple of weeks we've seen reports and speculation in the media about the current number of ICGS cases against MPs. Last year, we confirmed in our annual report there were 15 cases against MPs for bullying, harassment or sexual misconduct from July 2020 to June 2021. We are seeing a similar trend in disclosures so far this year. Final figures will be published in our annual report. So that might suggest there aren't 56 mm. or anything close. It may well, be... We're not saying 15 is <clears throat> great either, but no, no, it's a no, lot, no, lot less. No, and again, I, I agree, it, but... it's about getting uh, the, the, the facts right and the stories right.